Welcome to the playlist for Earth Materials and Systems. This is a tutorial series designed to help students pass a content assessment for middle school science in the Summit platform. However, even if you don't have Summit, this is useful for you if you want to review things like the rock cycle, the geological and natural processes that change the surface of the Earth, and uh, the different spheres that make up the planet and how they interact with each other, as well as how chemical and physical changes have to do with these changes in interactions of the planet. This video, the first one, is going to be focusing on the different spheres that make up the Earth's materials and organisms. You may have heard of the geosphere. That is the rocky part of the world. Geo means rock. Earth is one of the three closest planets to the sun. It's primarily a rocky planet. It's got that inner core, the outer core, the mantle, and the crust all made up of rock. And that's what most of the Earth is. Now, when you look at mountains, when you look at dirt, when you look at soil, when you look at rocks, what you're looking and seeing is the geosphere. Then there's also the atmosphere, a thin little layer of gas that extends over the surface of the Earth, trapped by Earth's gravity. The atmosphere is made of 78% nitrogen gas, 21% oxygen gas, and the last percent or so is made of trace amounts such as carbon dioxide, water vapor, helium, argon, hydrogen gas, and other gases produced by volcanoes. Now the atmosphere is a very, very, very thin layer. If the Earth was an onion, one layer of onion would be too much to represent the size of the atmosphere compared to the size of the planet. Extends less than 100 kilometers from the surface to a planet that has thousands of kilometers, or actually tens of thousands of kilometers across. So it's not very much, all right? But it's enough for, to produce all the weather and climate in the planet and support life on this world. So it's very, very important. Then we also have the hydrosphere. That is the water part of the world, and it includes the icy part of the world, ice caps and glaciers, but also the liquid parts such as the oceans and rivers and streams and all of that. Even the water vapor that's in the atmosphere can technically be considered part of the hydrosphere. Now, the hydrosphere is also very important because it supports life on this planet. It's, it changes the geosphere and interacts with the atmosphere. And we're getting to that whole concept of interactions here, which is important for this objective. Now, do note that it's interesting that the Earth is a planet that is the only planet that we know of that has liquid water because it's just close enough and far enough from the sun to have that, which is so important for life. But it's also special that it has all three states of matter for water in a planet, and that's crucial to, for the ecosystems of the world. We also have the biosphere. Now, the biosphere is a term that refers to the living part of the planet, and it's hard to talk about that without talking about all of the other parts. Now, if you look at this diagram, they call the living part the ecosphere, and that's the actual living things. And then the rock part, the lithosphere, that's just another name for the outer layer of the actual world's geosphere, the outer layer of the crust. And because if you really think about it, most of the life is there. There's no life inside of the planet. All the life is in the outer layer. So that can make sense. But the biosphere is referred to as the conjunction of all of those things working together, right? So... One good way to look at that is to think about the, the water cycle. Because when you look at the water cycle, it, it, you can actually see a lot of the interactions between the spheres. First of all, the energy of the sunlight makes water evaporate from the oceans, which is part of the hydrosphere. And now water goes into the air and becomes part of the atmosphere as it condenses to form clouds. Then those clouds rain down, push, pull down by gravity, forming something called precipitation, such as rain. And... Then they hit the rocks and erode the rocks with rain and wind, and the rocks then become sediment, which are carried by rivers back into the ocean. So there you go, the hydrosphere interacting with the atmosphere to cause weather, interacting with the geosphere causing erosion, all of them interacting with each other. What about life? Well, life also releases water to transpiration into the air. Life uses water from the ground, from the oceans, from the rivers to support itself, because since 81% it is of life is generally made of water on average, right? And of course, none of that would be possible life without the weather, without the climate, and without the ground which it lives in. The roots of trees hold the ground in place and slow down erosion, but animals also cause erosion. It's all interrelated. So other key terms you need to know for this uh, subject, like I just mentioned, is the lithosphere. It is just the outer, outer layer of the actual geosphere. Right. So we think about that. That's where the part of the, the world where you actually will find life because it's the uh, part of the crust where life is at the very, very outer layer. The first uh, five to 80 kilometers or so, depending on the thickness of the crust. Now, interacting interaction is a term that refers to how systems actually interact with each other. 
And like I mentioned in the previous uh, slide, all of these systems are actually affecting each other, right? Before we talk about more examples of interaction, I will briefly want to mention the carbon cycle because it does matter for the test. Do remember that when plants uh, breathe or animals breathe, they are releasing carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And that's an example of life interacting with the atmosphere, right? And, but then when plants trap carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through photosynthesis, that is another interaction between the atmosphere and the biosphere, right? So then, then plants and animals decay and become part of the soil and, and therefore part of the geosphere. So as you can see in the carbon cycle, you have interactions between the life forms as well. And of course, the, climate, the water cycle, as we describe, is another way to think about that. So here's some examples of, of things that um, we're going to talk about in order to see the interactions between the spheres. See if you can spot it each time. Maybe you can pause it before I say the answer on how do these things represent interactions. So if I say that I, Mr. Lima, is breathing, which two spheres are interacting? Well, I'm alive, so I'm part of the biosphere, and breathing requires air, so that's the atmosphere interacting with the biosphere. If Miss Haven swims, the biosphere interacts with the hydrosphere. When Mr. Shaldau goes cross-country skiing in a mountain, you have the mountain part, which is the geosphere. You have the ski part, which it requires the snow, which is part of the hydrosphere. And you have the Mr. Shaldau, which is alive, so it's part of the uh, biosphere. Mr. Spaulding digs a hole to hide inside of. Well, that's the biosphere digging a hole on the geosphere. Mr. Smith in exhales deeply when, while fishing. Well, she's alive and she's fishing, so that's biosphere right there. And she is exhaling, so that's air interactions with the atmosphere. But she needs to fish in the water, so there is hydrosphere there as well. A mountain rose due to rain. That's geosphere, mountain, and rain, which is a hydrosphere thing but also the atmosphere, which is causing weather. A volcano spills ash into the air. Well, that's the geosphere, the volcano, spilling ash into the atmosphere, the air. Wind builds a sand dune. That's the atmosphere, the wind part, the weather, creating a sand dune in a geosphere. Rain falling. you got the hydrosphere because you have water. You have weather because you have the atmosphere. A wave caused by wind erodes a shoreline, displacing a bird nest from a cliff. All four of them very clearly are there. you got the bird that's alive. you got the cliff being eroded, and that's part of the geosphere. The erosion requires the, the wind, which is part of the weather, and the shoreline and the waves are part of the hydrosphere too. So all of them combine to one. So hopefully this makes it clear what the hydrosphere, a geosphere, biosphere, and, and um, atmosphere are all about and how they interact with each other to actually change our planet and make up the things which are in it. I'll see you in the next video for objective number two.